What if women could reproduce without men? This is made possible with the technology called IVG, in vitro gametogenesis. Now, most of you probably aren't familiar with this technology, but you are familiar with, familiar with its sister, IVF. IVF is the process of taking sperm and egg cells from a male and female donor to be fertilized in the lab and brought to term. I want you to look at the people sitting in the audience beside you. Chances are, a few of them are the product of IVF. IVG is similar to IVF, and its difference lies in etymology and construction. So I'm going to break down IVG to explain. The genesis part of IVG comes from the Greek word to build, and the gamete part of IVG comes from the Greek word for wife. It refers to both male and female sex cells. The important distinction between IVF and IVG is because IVG creates the possibility of building reproductive cells from any cell in your body. Any cell in your body, despite your reproductive cells, are called your somatic cells. And the next step in IVG would to take your somatic cells and turn them into pluripotent stem cells. Pluripotent stem cells are cells commonly found in embryonic development and their potency of information allows them to transform into any cell in your body. When I was researching this, I was reminded of something. How many of you have watched Moana? Well, one of its beloved characters is a shapeshifter called Maui. His ability is similar to that of these pluripotent cells in that he's concentrated, strong, powerful, and potent. These cells are just like Maui in their ability to change into any cell in your body. This is what makes IVG possible and redefines our reproductive future. Hopefully, this is the last of the scientific terminology because I want to pivot and talk about something more personally significant to me. I came across IVG as an essay topic and it caught my eye specifically because someone close to me endured multiple failed trials of IVF before finally having their daughter. I understand the emotional strain that IVF can have on a family and infertility's implications on women, restricting them in things like the beauty industry and the workplace. IVG allows us to re-examine our society as it's set up now. It redefines the roles of motherhood and fatherhood completely, as IVG would allow for self-sufficient families with only one parent. Women would no longer be defined by their capacity of motherhood, and reproductive responsibility would be redistributed back to women and men equally, as both genders would be responsible for both sex cells, sperm and egg cells. IBG removes variables of age, fertility, and sexual orientation as factors completely when talking about reproduction. Although, these benefits bring many things to the table, with any tech new technology, there's things we need to consider. IVG is the same. One concern fostered way before IVG was ever created are designer babies. This phenomenon is a couple's ability to choose the genetic makeup of their offspring. When speaking about this concern, I want you to realize that the gene pool is limited and the trait selection could be regulated by legislative and policy shifts. Long-term health effects will be factored out through clinical trial. And Dr. Adashi, a former dean of biomechanics and medicine at Brown says that we're far from human application and it will be a good few years before we get there. But I believe that women could still benefit from the ramifications of IVG's existence in the meantime. I hope this discussion imbued you with as much wonder as it did me. Thank you.